Hey, everybody. It's the Drive to School Podcast. I am Pastor Goodman, your host. Uh, joining us today is uh, my good friend, my co-worker, Deaconess Sarah Longmire. How are you doing? Hey, I'm well. How are you? I'm doing awesome. Thanks for hanging out today. Um, Sarah gets to, uh, Deaconess Longmire gets to to uh, help produce uh, a lot of the, the Bible studies that, that we, as uh, higher things, uh, get to distribute. If you came to conference, you get a, a year's worth of these uh, high school Bible studies. If uh, you don't, uh, they're available at a subscription, or you can go through the archive at a very reasonable rate. But honestly, uh, the reason I love the Bible studies is because they teach hope. Um, we're going to be uh, picking through a Bible study, or at least a part of a Bible study that, that we're working through on uh, 1 Timothy. Uh, so Sarah, give me sort of the, the high notes of uh, what 1 Timothy is all about. Yeah, so 1 Timothy is the letter that Paul writes to a young pastor, Timothy, and um, it's really all focused on keeping to the pure doctrine, to the gospel of Jesus. So don't be... Um, don't be sucked in by um, heresy, by just talking to talk, by um, unhelpful conversations or arguments, but instead keep on keeping on Jesus, <laughs> identity and baptism, put it before your people and keep it in front of your people. I like it. So um, if we were going to be looking at, I don't know, hypothetically chapter two for this particular Bible study, what's going on in uh, 1 Timothy 2? Yeah, so First Timothy two is uh, a lot of fun because it it starts with prayer and it starts uh, who do, who do we pray for? Um, praying for those in authority. So we're kind of thinking about um, c- comparison with others or the outside idea of of. Um, vocational differences. Um, And then the second half kind of goes into some really specific vocational differences by gender. So thinking about um, authority given to men, um, authority given to women, differences in that. But ultimately, it really comes down to the crux of um, Jesus for those in authority, for men, for women, and really the gift that is found within vocational differences. Um, So we get to kind of talk about um, authority versus power. We get to think about what defines us, where our worth comes from. Uh, It's, I don't know, it's a lot of, it's a lot of good stuff. It's a lot of fun in in the second chapter. So in in that whole description, uh, you didn't use the word can't a single time. Um, But I think that's sort of the the elephant in the room. If you're reading first Timothy chapter two, it it says that um, there are, there are things that you can't do. Um, There are things that, that I can't do. And there are things that, that are are given specifically for men or specifically for women. Uh, The word can't sort of has to come up, but is it a burden or is it, is it a gift? Is it, is it purely because of what's fair or is it something else? Mm, Okay. So, yeah. So we can talk in terms of, of, can or can't. Um, But I think when you get down to what's fair versus what's given is really Mm -hmm. where the opportunity for um, the gospel uh, to be what we are focused on. So um, thinking about fair, that's a that's a law word. That's a, what uh, did I put in and what do I get out? Um, And if we really- That's kind of scary. Yeah, well, right. So if we looked at God and expected fairness, um, I'm the first one out of the room. I'm not interested in that. Um, because yeah, fair would be I, condemnation. Yeah, I know what I um, deserve, and that is not anything that I um, am hoping for. And yet, um, if we can look at fair through Jesus, we recognize that um it is extremely unfair <laughs> to be part of his family. And that is all gift because we have the opportunity to um, live forgiven uh, because the law was poured out on him and not poured out on us. Um, so can, can't, uh, that's really um, among one another, uh, neighbor to neighbor, but it's it's uh, we can look at it vocationally and recognize that there's probably a reason for that, and that's because God is good and um, He is unfair, and that is also good. 
Right. We actually would much prefer a good God rather than a fair God. And um, when it kind of comes to this, then when we talk about, uh, for example, equality amongst the genders, then uh, it's not fair, but it, it's good that that makes us equal because we are equal in Christ. Our, our, our sins are equally forgiven. We are equally loved. We are equally redeemed, equally baptized. And, and then so inside of our vocations, uh, we're finally actually free to not have to earn anything. And so um, when it comes to vocations of, of pastor like Timothy um, versus the vocation of a lay person, um, man or woman uh it, it's no longer who is doing more or doing more important work because the equality is already done um in in what is in that which is good not which that is fair uh we we, we start our vocations baptized and, and then from there everything else is, is simply uh, about actually our neighbor so as we're kind of starting to talk about first timothy then um chapter two uh paul's actually very particular uh that that women should not do certain things inside of the divine service and and he, he limits it to this too um that that he says you know the lifting up of holy hands um in every place men should pray lifting up holy hands he's talking about the divine service he, he's he's very clearly talking about prayer offices he's talking about the office of the holy ministry so um we're not talking about like uh, are you allowed to be on this podcast right correct not the same how come say some more yeah, well, the office of public ministry is the office that God has ordained to um, men to be in the stead of Jesus, to stand and forgive sins. Um, that it doesn't mean that that pa that man is in charge of all the things. He's the the flashy, fancy guy up front, like. In fact, that means he's the servant of servants. Like if we look at it again um, through Jesus, we recognize um, Jesus went to the cross. Um, he won salvation with his very life. And pastors are asked to be that for their people, to be the under shepherds. Um, that's not necessarily something that I need to do or I want to do. It's not something that a lot of even men are called to do. Um, and so we recognize that um, there is gift in vocational differences and that there is gift in how God has put uh, a structure in place for um, delivering his gifts. And that's something that men do in a very intentional way, in a very specific way as pastor. And thanks be to God for that. I don't need or want um, that role or that authority. I get that. Um, I get that. Uh, yeah. This is sort of the, the, the thing about authority is, especially when you start with Jesus, um, to the Christian, authority is, is never actually like a, a fun thing. It's always a servant thing. Um, the world loves, well, they love power more than authority. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe, maybe we should distinguish between power and authority a little bit. What do you think? Yeah, I think that, um, well, words matter in defining mm -hmm. the matters. And I think that there is a distinction between power and authority. And I would suggest that the world may use the word authority, but they really mean power because they're thinking um, getting to uh, lord over someone else, getting to tell someone else what to do, um, getting to have something done for them, but not have to not have to work towards that or be um, responsible for the outcome. Mm -hmm. Versus, I think where you're going is um, when we think about authority through the lens of Jesus, we think about. Um, servanthood. We think about serving on behalf of. We think about. Um, pouring ourselves out to the better of whoever it is we have authority over. So we can look at that. Um, right. So authorities. Yeah. Authority is always going to be a sacrifice word. Um, yeah. If we you have a, authority like church, Jesus. We can think about uh, that family, you know, head of households and dads. Um, yeah. It's all to the betterment of the other. Right, because we're starting with Jesus, who had all authority and used it not simply in terms of power to come down from the cross instead of die for us, but to actually suffer for us, to to die for us. Um, we, we love power because we don't want to be controlled. We don't want to be told what to do because vocation is a, it's a wonderful concept, but when you put a whole bunch of sinners inside of it, there's sin inside of the vocations that God would use to care for us. They're, your pastor is a sinner. Um, you're... you're, you're husband or your wife, your parents are sinners, your teachers are sinners. Um, and so it's, it's sort of uh, easy to sort of covet 
independence. Um, but what's what's really kind of wonderful here is that then when we get to start with Jesus, even when we talk about vocations, we can say that the sin done inside of them is wrong. It, it's not okay, and and it should be warred against every bit as much as it should be forgiven. Um, but it also doesn't stop Jesus from working through these things. And so it's no longer simply who has the most control or who has the most power, but but where can I find Jesus in this vocation? Because really that's that's what we need. And and this is maybe some of the issue with uh why so many people are are struggling with with running from churches, with with um with, with sort of breaking down all of the, the trauma that they've they've endured over the years. Uh and there, there's fancy language for it that we don't need to get into today. But like what if we just sort of recognize that inside of the box there's a whole bunch of sin, but the the question that makes the box worth having, the church worth having, is can Jesus work here? And and when when Paul writes to Timothy about this, I think the one thing that he really wants everybody to hear is Jesus is working here, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's kind of where we started was thinking about the entirety of First Timothy being a letter of uh, stay the course, hold to Christ, don't get um, waylaid or confused with other things. And I think that um, getting caught up in power versus authority versus control is one of those other things. Um, so if we can just take a deep breath and go back to Jesus and who he ha- who he is, what he's done, um, what he gives us. It kind of helps us relax in the roles that we have and in the lives that we share with sinners <laughs> who are also yeah. forgiven. Right. And, and that's where we actually start to embrace the word can't in this chapter, because all of the, the, the can'ts that, that Paul is going through with Timothy, they're the things that make it harder to find Jesus in the church, harder to find Jesus in the divine service. If your pastor is um, running from the things of, of God, um, well, it, it's harder to find Christ there if he is not self-controlled, if, if he is, is uh, if he is drunk, if he is, if, if, if he is uh, in all of these places falling into sin, yes, that can be forgiven, but makes it harder to find Jesus. That's worth warring against. That That's worth leaning away from. Um, but again, it, it, it's not that like, if you just do these things, you will be valuable. And if you just sort of have these, these genders, you will be valuable, but, but rather it, it's, if you're in Christ, you are already valuable, but these are the things then that, that will help this value be shared that, that will, that will help the, these gifts that make us valuable, that the forgiveness of sins, life and salvation be shared. Yeah, it's uh, it's recognizing and separating identity from work. Um, so we get value in hmm. our baptism through Jesus, and we get the opportunity to work and serve our neighbor as we've been placed and as we've been gifted. Um, and so there doesn't have to be um, kind of stepping over one another to get to God. God's come to us, and he um, has taken care of that so we can rest in it. Awesome. Deaconess Sarah Longmire, thank you so much for hanging out with us again on the Drive School Podcast. Yeah, you're welcome. Have a good one. You too.